So one of the questions that came up from assignment number two is what's the scoop with this operator subscript and how do we overload it properly so it'll pass the test cases? And that's an excellent, excellent question. So I thought I'd kind of walk through a simple example that will demonstrate how and why you should define operator subscript using a pair of methods. And I'll use this in the context of a very, very simple stripped down generic array example. This is like um, a really lame vector that only implements a few methods just to kind of get the point across. I made no attempt at trying to do the implementation the way you should do it. It's purely here to motivate how to implement the appropriate types of subscript operations. So here's our array. As you can see, the array class is, is a template parameterized by type name T. Should be no surprise there. I have a constructor which is given a size and from that size we'll allocate a dynamically allocated array. I also have another constructor that's going to take a pointer to type T for the first element and a pointer to type T for the one past the end element. So basically I can initialize my generic array from a uh, native or built-in C style array. I just did this to make the example work. And uh, this does a little bit of uh, pointer arithmetic magic by subtracting first from last to find the size. And then it goes ahead and allocates that size and then copies the contents of the range from first to last into the array. Uh, again, this, this is not meant to be production code, but it's just meant to make the example work. Then we're going to have a couple of different subscript operators. And I'm going to start with kind of the obvious one first. And this is the operator subscript that can be used either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of non-const array objects. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. So here's operator subscript. You can see it takes an i, which is an int i, and it goes ahead and it indexes into the dynamically allocated array at index location i. So it's basically array sub i, that should look familiar and it returns a reference to whatever's in that location. And so by returning a reference, it means that this code can appear on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the assignment statement. And I'll show you an example of this in just a second. We're also gonna define a const version of operator subscript, but I'm gonna leave it out for the moment in order to motivate why we need it in the first place. Then also just to make the example compile for my simple-minded purposes, I threw in a very, very stripped down set of factory methods to make an iterator to the beginning and end of an instance of array. And again, this is this is just for illustration purposes. Don't, don't try this at home. You'll notice that begin and end are factory methods that are const, and that of course means they don't modify the contents of the array. They just return the array, the underlying array pointer, and then array plus size. So beginning is the array pointer, and then array plus size is end. And you can see the implementation is pretty much what you'd expect for this really lame stripped down version. We keep track of the size, and we keep track of the dynamically allocated array of elements of type T. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Not the best way to write it, but it gets the point across for our purposes. So down here, we have the main program, and I'm gonna define a built-in array with three elements, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna define an instance of my user-defined array, which I've instantiated with int. So it's also an int array, just a user-defined int array, not a built-in int array. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass a, which is the address of this built-in array, and then a plus three, which is one past the end of that. And so that's gonna go ahead and initialize my user-defined array with the contents of the built-in array. All right, still so far so good. Now let's come down here and let's change a sub one. So this will be actually the second element in the array because of course everything starts at zero. Uh, and what you can see here is that we're gonna assign a sub one the value 100. And that works because this operator subscript returns a reference. And so as a result, it can appear on the left-hand side of an assignment statement. And when you can do that, when you can put an object, or in this case, a subscript operation into the array object on the left-hand side and have it work from the point of view of assignment, 
that's called making it an L value, or L value stands for left-hand side value. Okay, still so far so good. Now we can also say int i set equal to array sub one. And in this case, it's also going to call this operation here. And what it's going to do is it's going to return the result there. So now we're using it on the right-hand side of the assignment statement. And so that's what's called an R value. So R value means can appear on the right-hand side of an assignment statement. L value means can appear on the left-hand side of the assignment statement. And because of the way we've done this so far, we can use the subscript operation to either get us an L value or an R value. And then once we've got this, we can then go ahead and copy from the beginning of our array to the end and write the output to the standard output. And we'll, we'll talk more about what all this magic means later. It's just here to make the example work. Uh, I could have done this other ways too, um, but this is good enough for our purposes. So let me go ahead and compile this, then I'll run it. And you can see it prints one, 103, which is exactly what it should do. Okay, so far so good. Now what happens though, if we come up here and we make ourselves a const array. So when you put the word const in front of a, of a type declaration like the array, it says, make this be a read-only object. And read-only objects cannot appear on the left-hand side of an assignment statement. So they're now only going to be usable as R values, not as L values. So let's come down here and let's try to compile this thing. And you can see that we get an error and the error says we're trying to basically use a const array in a context that requires a, uh, that, that only allows non-const operations. So that's clearly not a good thing. So the question is, how do we fix this? Well, we might say, oh, I know, I'll just come up here and I'll comment out this particular call. And therefore I'm not trying to use this on the, uh, the right hand, the left hand side anymore. So let's see if that will solve our problem. Well, we've still got a problem, right? It still doesn't like the fact that we're trying to use this code in the context where we've made it a const, but we're trying to call a method that's a non-const method. So if you take a look up here, you'll see that operator subscript, as we've written it thus far, is a non-const method. You don't see the word const at the end. And so as a consequence, we can't use it even if we try to restrict ourselves to only using it on the right-hand side of an assignment statement. It still doesn't like it because it says, this is a non-const method, darn it. You can't call non-const methods on const objects. So what do we do? Well, what we do is quite simple. We come up here and we remove this if zero uh, piece of code that tells the preprocessor to ignore that part of the software. And instead, what we're gonna do now is then have a const version of operator subscript. So we make it a const by saying const. So this means it doesn't modify the object and it returns something that is also const, which means that it can't be assigned to. So once we make that simple change, then all of a sudden our code here will compile. And now we get the values one, two, three, because of course we can't write to a const object. And if we come up here and we try to comment, uncomment this code, this code also will not compile. And what it says there is we're trying to assign to a read-only location, which is indeed is what we're trying to do, because now we have a const array and we can't assign to a const array, and that's because it's const. So the only operations that could be called on the const array are const operations, and we've defined a const operation that returns a read-only reference, but we can't use that on the left-hand side. So if we go ahead and comment this out, everything is happy again, it compiles and runs. And uh, so the point of this is just to give you a sense of the difference between const and non-const methods in general, and then more specifically, how with operator subscript, you have to have two versions of operator subscript. Now, we've already covered this in detail in earlier parts of the class, except when we covered it in earlier parts of the class, we were talking about the top method in our generic stack. And we had, if, if you go back and look at the, the stack that we had, that actually even the non-generic version of stack had two versions of top. 
one that was const, one that was non-const. And so this is just the same exact idea, except now we're going to be looking at using the operator subscript instead of the top operation. So hopefully that's clear. That should help you quite a bit with assignment two if you're scratching your chin, trying to figure out what the heck to do. Uh, but if you look carefully at the, the code and the test cases, it's, it's distinguishing between the const and the non-const usages. And if you look carefully, you'll see there's a const scoped array and a non-const scoped array. And so you have to know how to write, have the, the right versions of operator subscript. And there need to be two of them. And they need to be defined as I've shown you here. Another point I wanna make about the programming assignment, because it's important when you start working with, with templates, uh, if you define yourself, your, let's say you define a copy constructor, just as an example. So let's go ahead and say array, const, um, array, ref, right-hand side, and then we would have the code here that would do the, that part. Make sure when you do this, you say array t. Likewise, when you define your assignment operator, you'll have it return a reference to t, and it'll also take a const array t. Um, now, for your for this particular code, you don't actually define the you don't actually implement the copy constructor or the assignment operator. Those are hidden; they're made private. Um, but make sure you do this. Don't write this code. I, I saw some people. When I was going through some questions the other day, they wrote code like this. And this code may compile, but it'll it won't work properly. It'll it'll give compile errors at some later point. Um, and so make sure you get in the habit when you have something that's a template of using the proper syntax for this, which would be that. So that's just another little tip that I saw people making a mistake with. So so please make sure you, you do that. 